variety within Wolvender for a class to be justifiable, because previously it was just like cap power and light or condi and then kind of power if you were brave. Yeah. <laughs> Should we wait on more people to join the or load into the aerodrome or um where are we okay good we got tracing K, were you gonna come and party as well or um I'm probably just gonna watch just gonna vibe. From Geeks aside. Cool. Yeah. No, I've got I've got a front row seat. <laughs> it's true, they do have a front row seat. Oh my god, these cats. The cats are Pop up the chat. <gasps> Baby cats. I know. Ours don't so snuggle, they, they just, just bite, bite each other. <laughs> it's true, they do bite each other. Yeah, it's either so it'll be Lancey really loves to snuggle, so he will initiate snuggling. Nutmeg is dominant in, in the grooming sense. Lancey's more dominant with food. Nutmeg's dominant with grooming. So if Lancey comes over her, then she will usually groom him. And then that means it's either going to turn into... <laughs> oh. It's either going to turn a lot. into um, more snuggles or battle, basically, whenever it happens. <laughs> So far, did you want to come and party with us into the um, uh, rain trading room, or were you just going to hang out? Oh, let me pop open the chat. Hold on, where's the... Oh, I have a... You know, it, it's kind of funny. Kay's voice gave me a double take because you sound kind of like somebody I know. And <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> my, my my voice, voice right now is not a hundred percent. I've been sick for like two weeks, so <laughs> it could instantly change. Okay, sounds good, Solar. Um, I am going to be keeping chat, um, like the the chat window in the Discord thing collapsed um, during the whole time. So just if you need to say something to me specifically, um, probably do it in just like Twitch chat or something. Or I'll see it if you do it like it, like a whisper in game too. So I almost just did a ready check for some reason. Uh, raid training. That's what we want. Oh, my I was muted. I've, I've been muting intermittently because I've been coughing. Um, oh. It didn't say that Tracy readied up, but at least Tracy's in here with us. So we're chilling. Yeah, we good. A okay. Good. Okay. Well, um, thank you to everyone who has arrived thus far for a Will Bendy class. Um, we got Pixel here. By the way, hello. Um, so I'm sure I'm sharing my stream. So I have my PowerPoint up for. Perf. I will swap over to presentation it. and stuff. I'll swap over to it now. Here we go. There we Maybe go. You. Here's. Wait, do we want to wait for more people to show up? Or person? do we person? just get into it? I don't uh, know what the, the protocol is. I mean, usually I kind of like fuck around for like, I, we did a lot of our setup prior to me starting stream this time. But gotcha. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, I, I take like a couple minutes to kind of fuck around, which we have a little bit. Um, I know me. Right now I have to display your Slavari. That is who will be speaking to you. Oh, do, uh, do slash talking. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me let me move to a, a, a oh, better talking man. area. You know, this is a good talking area. Yeah, it is, console. right? You're by the like console this. and stuff. Wait, Wait no, let's well, do it in front of the fire. The, the, the Ooh, yeah. in fire. <laughs> Since it, we're like waiting around anyway, are you going to work on making some weapons over here? Oh, and there's like the little tables Wait, and stuff. Wait, no, there's a table. This, this is perfect. This is That perfect. is a very teachy table. I'm too tall. There we go. There we go. This is a very teachy table, I agree. It is. <laughs> I okay. love this. Okay. I'll actually go to your PowerPoint now. Cool. Uh, so. Blah, 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 blah. Where is my... There we go. Now I'm on your PowerPoint. Welcome to Woobender 101. Uh, Woobender is a really interesting and cool elite specialization. It doesn't really behave like a lot else in Guild Wars. Um, for reasons that we'll get into as we go in. It's I've been playing it almost nonstop since um, End of Dragons came out, actually just because I'm curious. I have almost 800 hours on my Guardian. This Guardian basically only plays Woolbender. I love this spec. I, I can't get enough of it, and I really hope other people are excited about it too by the end of this. 
Um, Woolbender is a guardian spec, focusing largely on its aggression, movement, and interactions with virtues. Virtues are guardians default mechanic, the same way that warriors have burst skills and rangers have pets, guardians have their virtues. They're passive profession skills with a trigger condition, and an activated skill that disables the trigger condition, kind of like a signet or a facet on Herald. Um, Woolbender flips his paradigm, and it only gives you access to the trigger condition after you've activated the skill, kind of like a stance. So after you cast F1, F2, or F3 on Willbender, you get access to your Virtue Stance, which I can demonstrate real quick. So I don't have any active if you look down in the buff bar area, but if I cast F1, you see that I get the Justice effect, where consecutive attacks will cause burning. On Guardian, that's a passive effect where you will just cause burning after so many hits just by playing Guardian. On Willbender, you have to have that effect active and you have to maintain that stance, quote unquote. I'm gonna be calling them stances a lot just because I figure that's what makes a lot of sense to people because it changes the way that virtues work a lot. Okay. Uh, Willbender is very fragile. Guardian has the lowest health total in the game alongside Thief and Elementalist. Uh, but by nature of being a Guardian Elite Specialization, you have a lot of defense baked into your kit, and you have a lot of ways to mitigate that fragility. And Woolbender has a lot of build diversity, um, allowing for just this one spec to fill a ton of different needs. Um, it it's has more build diversity. Squishiest, the squishiest of the, garden, the Guardian specs, yes. though, yeah? It absolutely is the thiefy. squishiest of the Guardian specs. It is very thiefy. It is very, very thiefy. Um, but Woolbender has more build diversity than a lot of specs do in Guild Wars. Um, a lot of specs will have, you know, maybe like a healer build and a DPS or a healer and a boon. Um, Willbender has power DPS, power alacrity DPS, Connie DPS, and heal alacrity DPS with variations under all of those, or most of them at least, um, which leads to a ton of different ways to approach the spec. If you're already a Guardian Enjoyer of these builds, the only one that requires a unique gear set is power alacrity. DPS, um, but that makes it very accessible to gear. If you want to gear Condi Firebrand and then play Condi Woolbender, those can share gear. If you're gearing for one or the other, um, they can share gear at a minor loss because Firebrand has the Trapper set up, Woolbender has the Balth Rune set up, um, and those can share, but they're whichever one just depends on whichever one you feel fits best. Um, the only thing that you can't really play on Woolbender are quickness centric builds. Um, just because Wilbender doesn't have quickness, that's generally Firebrand's domain. Um, of the builds that you theoretically could play, Conditional Alacrity is kind of the only one that's off the table, since you take two uh, key traits to affect your condition application, in Tyrant's Momentum and Amplified Wrath, which I'll get into more in a, in a bit. Um, but you have to replace them with Phoenix Protocol and Battle Presence in order to generate Alacrity, that's Phoenix Protocol, and then share it, that's Battle Presence. Without those two traits, both your ability to apply burning and the window under which you can apply that burning are greatly diminished, which reduces your damage tremendously. We'll be getting more into the traits later, but just at the baseline, I would not recommend conditional alacrity. Well, power DPS and power alacrity have very different gameplay patterns. Condi DPS and conditional alacrity would basically play identically. So if you want that play style, then generally just play Condi DPS. If you want an alacrity, will bender, play power DPS or will mender, whatever suits your needs. Um, there are a couple of key traits on Willbender, or on Willbender that are really important to the way the spec operates. Um, restorative Virtues is probably the defining feature. It was definitely that for the longest time. Um, restorative Virtues will reduce active weapon skill cooldowns, not passive ones, not the one, or not the ones that aren't currently equipped. So if you have two sets equipped, the one that isn't active won't benefit from Restorative Virtues. Um, but every time one of your virtues triggers, you will restore 0.25 seconds of your weapon skill cooldown. Leveraging that trait is where DPS Wilbender gets a lot of its damage. The other trait that we get a lot of our damage from is Lethal Tempo, which is a minor trait, um, which then gets boosted by the preferred DPS uh, Grandmaster trait in Tyrant's Momentum, which boosts the damage uh, modifier. However, you get the... I can show this in-game really quickly. Um, Tyrant's Momentum is um, granted to you, or Lethal Tempo is granted to you every time you activate a Virtue, which is casting them, or the Virtue's passives are triggered, you gain that damage bonus and they stack. Um, so because of that, you really, really need to maintain uptime. Um, you need to find opportunities to either cast Virtues or hit the boss enough times to trigger one of your other Virtues in order to maintain your DPS. Because if that modifier goes away, that's damage you have to start building back up and that's time you aren't spent doing your max potential damage. Um, 
for boon builds, Phoenix Protocol is the most important trait um, because the Phoenix Protocol is what lets you as a Woodbender generate alacrity. Um, it modifies your F2. Instead of uh, healing every proc, you then grant regeneration and alacrity to yourself. That regeneration and alacrity both get shared via Battle Presence and the Virtues trait line, um, which then gives you the ability to provide those boons to your group as a support. Um, Holy Reckoning, another build or another trait in the major trait, um, area allows Winter to provide a ton of might. Every time one of your virtues triggers, you provide a stack of might with a pretty high base duration. So even with Alacrity DPS and its relatively low required concentration, you give a ton of might output, which is very, very comfortable for a lot of groups. Um, like I mentioned, though, you need Phoenix Protocol and Battle Presence to provide um, your Alacrity, which does lock uh, Alac Winter builds into bringing virtues which can seem a bit restrictive, but Virtues has so much synergy with Willbender inherently that it's not really a, a loss. Um, it's just something Willbender wants to be doing. Willbender interacts a ton with its Virtues, so bringing Virtues as a trait line is no real loss at all. Um, are there any questions so far? I know I've been going kind of fast, but I want to stop intermittently and give people time to ask questions or get things answered. All right. Um, unscathed contender in the virtue straight line is way too efficient for power and power alacrity or whatever. just guardian in general to pass up. Um, it's a scholar modifier, so over 90% health and also gives you a ton of strike damage uh, percentage when you have Aegis, which Willbender generates a ton of um, just through its normal rotation. Amplified Wrath is a crucial trait for condition Willbender since we output more burn with it. It changes our trigger. Um, or not Amplified Wrath, excuse me, Permeating Wrath. Um, it changed our trigger from five to three, but that's valuable for Power Willbender as well. By reducing the trigger condition, we then are able to activate Restorative Virtues more often, which means casting um, high impact skills that are generally gated by a cooldown more frequently, which obviously means more damage. Um, and yeah, uh, right to answer your question, the Alacrity and Phoenix Protocol, as does the Regeneration, both scale with Moon Duration. Um, you apply a ton because the amount that you output is based on your number of hits. You technically don't need any to provide um, your 100% of lock up time, but it's very tight and you've got to be very, very precise. So 10 to 15% is generally prescribed to boost our might output as well as making sure that you have some overcap. Um, reduce cooldowns on our already low cooldown virtues via power of the virtuous and uh, the strike damage modifier and inspiring virtue make the trait line a complete no-brainer having reduced cooldowns benefits will mender that's more casts of f2 for more alacrity um, and f3 for more might um, it's a strike damage modifier um, from power or from inspiring virtue that we have all the time in a way that uh, dragon hunter just doesn't and with already low cooldown virtues, reducing them even further with power of the virtuous is incredibly, incredibly powerful. Um, Heal Alacrity Willbender, which I'm going to be calling Willmender for the rest of this just because it's shorter, um, gets a lot of mileage out of Hammer because you stack its auto attack symbols, um, which all trigger the healing from Honor's Rid of Persistence, and it also gives you multi hits that trigger Holy Reckoning. Um, I can switch over to Willmender real quick. Rid of Persistence improves your symbols, and those improved symbols heal allies. Um, because the hammer auto attack chain is so fast, those symbols will actually stack on top of each other, and each of those stacked symbols will also apply healing. So it's tremendous healing output, tremendous protection output, a lot of multi-hits for generating value from Holy Reckoning. It's just very, very powerful. Wolvender's general strength so that it's got a ton of mobility and relatively free defense access. Um, in an optimal rotation, you do use F2 and F3 to maintain um, damage uh, buffs from, like, you know, Inspired Virtue or generating max value out of Restorative Virtues or whatever. You can hold back on those as defenses because F2 is an evade, F3 gives you Aegis instability, and it's a shadow step. So you have all of these options to manage mechanics in a pinch. Um, other builds that are generally pretty fragile, um, like Thief builds or Elementalist builds, might not have the easiest immediate access to those defenses, whereas with Careful Play, Willbender definitely can have that access. Um, it has best-in-class cleave. No build cleaves like a Willbender does, um, especially Condition Willbender because of... Um, let me fix my traits real quick. Oops. Right, I'm on the wrong. Uh, Since you template. mentioned mobility, I'm just quickly showing on screen exactly how many teleports. You have so many. So you, I probably um, didn't do it, but that's advancing strike will do it. 
Beep. Condition Willbender has less than it used to, unfortunately, much to my dismay. Uh, but Power, Power, Alacrity, and Willbender all have tons. Uh, like all of your F skills. Yeah, all of your F skills are movement. They're all different kinds of movement, importantly, yeah. which is important to keep in mind. F1 is a targeted movement skill, which will then put you at your target and then um, stop at them. F2 is an evade, so it'll move you through, kind of like Ellie Fire uh, Dagger used to. And F3 is a targeted, a ground targeted shadow step. Um, if you're playing Power Will Bender, you have Sword 2, which is an entity target shadow step. Um, you have uh, Great Sword 3, which is a leap. And on Power Alacrity, you have Sword 5, which is a dash followed by a shadow step. So, tremendous amounts of utility. Um, or mobility, rather, but utility as well. It has been, honestly, a lot of fun. To, I've just been taking this Power Lack build into open world. It's so fun. And it's so much fun. It's been a lot of A lot of it is I'm just like, ah, pressing buttons, but, like, it works. <laughs> like, like, I can maximize Wait, that's, I'm going to get into that at the, the end of the presentation yes, with more of right. world in PvP, awesome. but uh, Judge's Intervention, Sword 2, and Flash Combo were all great callouts because those all see play in world v world and PvP on optimal wheelbender builds. Um, Judge's Intervention is also an entity target shadow step that doesn't require line of sight, which is really important for like ganking someone in World v World if or in PvP if you see that they're on node. Um flash combo is really good as well. That's optimal for uh power and power lack will bender or some variants of power will bender and power lack will bender. So tons and tons and tons of mobility. Whoa, those yes. pistols. Willbender flames do count as triggers for virtue trigger, do count as damage procs for virtue triggers. Um, even though their personal damage is not very high, the additional hits do go a very long way. So making sure that you position your Willbender flames appropriately is really, really good for getting all of your cooldown reductions, getting all of your burn application, that whole deal. Um, Heaven's Palm is one of the best crowd control skills in the game. It has a 400 uh, break bar damage. The tooltip lies, it says 550. It aggregates damage that won't be aggregated in game. The center applies 400, the outside does 150. So it's 550 on the tooltip. But um, it's only a 20 second cooldown. So that's a ton of break bar damage that you can have access to very, very, very quickly. Um, Condition Willbender has better mobility and burst than Condition Firebrand, which takes a long time to ramp. It doesn't really have the ability to reposition the same way that Willbender does. Um, Ray, not to get your hopes up too much, I'm not going to be talking too much about Worldview World. I don't have a ton of experience with it. Most of my experience is SPVP. Um, I did take Willbender to top 250 in SPVP, so I'm confident there. And a lot of what I say is generally applicable to Worldview World, but I won't be talking on it too much because it's not where my expertise lies. Um... And for the last bullet point on this slide, um, Guardian has a ton of really, really insane um, utility skills, which I'm going to get into later. Every single Willbender build has a, a skill they can very easily just get rid of and bring some other more valuable utility if you need it. So that makes Willbender very, very flexible um, if you need to bring access uh, to some of Guard's myriad strengths. Um, its weaknesses are mirroring its unbelievable mobility it has unbelievably jank mobility um <laughs> rushing justice will stop at your chosen target with really strange movement logic as it's an it's an initial dash followed by an autocorrect um that adjusts your target and flowing resolve because it's an evade will move you through your chosen target which can be painful especially if you're playing um will mender um that might not be desirable behavior when you're playing the build but it's something you kind of have to deal with as a result of um needing to cast it to maintain alacrity um, all of your Willbender builds are going to maintain hunting for uptime, including Willmender, which means that you need to play in melee. Even with uh, pistols, you're predominantly a melee spec. Um, you can kind of get away with procking symbol or procking virtues from distance. Um, but because all of your virtues require you move towards the boss, basically, you're a melee spec for all intents and purposes with a little bit of ranged utility. Um, you need all of that to maintain lethal tempo. And if there's a fight that stops you from doing that, that can cause Willbender to struggle. Um, Power Wilbender has less burst than Dragon Hunter. It also can't precast traps, which then influences its burst even further, which is generally a reason you'd want to play a power build in the first place. Um, so Dragon Hunter tends to be a little bit more competitive in that capacity. Um, the Paether Relic, which is one of the relics that Power Wilbender can bring, and the relic that Power Alacrity Wilbender wants to bring, can be very uncomfortable to manage, since adds can steal the daggers from your shadow steps and uh, cooldown reduction on Power Willbender at least, can mess with how weapon skills line up with the four second ICD. Luckily for Power Willbender, it is optional, and for Power Alacrity, it doesn't really care about messing with that ICD, since it doesn't bring restorative virtues now in the first place. I shall break you. 
And for the Firebrand versus Condi Wilbender um, dichotomy, it has a lot more utility available to it. Even without bringing any of the Guardian utility, you have access to Tome 2 and Tome 3 that gives you so much that it's really, really difficult to compete in, in the context where your DPS needs to provide a ton of utility. Um, it's not usually an issue, especially I think it's becoming less and less of an issue as we're seeing a lot of um, support power creep in Druid and Chronomancer um, bringing just like the whole their whole class's worth of utility on one build. Um, so it's not as backbreaking as it used to be, but it is definitely something worth keeping in mind. Um, Restorative Virtues is a really unique trait that defines a ton of Wilbender. Um, it really reinforces that Wilbender is defined by engaging with its virtues. Um, it, its virtues don't behave like core guardians, but you want to trigger those virtues and cast them more than any other spec, which makes Wilbender get a lot of value out of things that benefit from virtues and Restorative Virtues double dips on a lot of those. Um, having access to a ton of mobility and a bunch of defense makes Wilbender both a very aggressive and fragile spec, but also a very tanky and resilient spec, depending on how comfortable you are with the build and where you can position, which makes it very, very skill expressive, something that I've really come to enjoy as I've grown into this spec. Um, it's also very executionally difficult, which I know can be a turnoff for a lot of people, but it's executionally difficult in a way that isn't typical of Guild Wars. There's not a ton of skills you need to worry about. It's a lot of making very split second decisions and making doing the best with what you can with your positioning and your cleave and all of these other things. Um, it's not like a hollow smith or a weaver where you have to juggle between a million skills or something like um, Mirage where you have to contend with like a bunch of really intricate behaviors on clones. It's just it's it's hard in a very pure sense where it's hard in a way that you have to be making correct decisions constantly. Um, it also has low conceptual complexity on account of the fact that it doesn't really have a ton of skills to worry about. You're not worrying about a ton of attunements. You don't have Revenant Legends to swap between. Um, hell, Condi Wilbender often brings Pistol, 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 Torch, which just means that you have seven weapon skills to worry about. That's not a ton. And a Signet on most builds that you don't even need to worry about pushing. Um, it also has very easy variants, such as Wilbender, and then very hard variants, such as the Warrior Relic variant of Condition Wilbender and the Pather Relic variant of Power Wilbender that make it a very, very easy spec to grow into. Um, you can start with Wilmender, get a feel for how the positioning feels, then step into Condi Wilmender as you want to get an idea of how to leverage your cleave better and get more out of your mobility. And then you really want to lean into using your mobility to preserve Aegis. Then you step into Power Wilmender. And there's a lot of places that you can start from in Wilmender and then grow into with the spec as well that make it very, very um, fun to learn. Um, I'm also going to go through some of the key skills for each of the general Wilbender builds. Persian Flames is a ton of burning. After you cast F1, because you need F1 up to maintain 100% uptime on your ability to apply burn, casting Purging Flames is priority number one. There's no reason to not be casting Purging Flames. You always want it on cooldown. The only, only exception is the skill lasts a while, um, so you want to place it if you're sure the boss isn't going to move out of it, it could be correct to hold off on it if it's only going to pulse once or twice before the boss jumps out. Peacekeeper, um, Pistol 2, is a very, very fast multi-hit skill that applies a ton of burning, um, which is obviously strong. Burning is what the build is built on. It's what we want to maximize. Um, so Peacekeeper does a lot of that. It applies its own, but it also combos with Symbol of Ignition. Symbol of Ignition is yet another skill that will uh, reward Wilbender for what it, uh, what it wants to do, which is just hitting as fast as it possibly can. Um, if an entity is inside of your symbol of ignition, um, hitting them will cause the next tick of the symbol to burn, which is strong. And if the enemy is outside of your symbol of ignition, um, firing a projectile from your symbol will cause the symbol to ignite and then apply the burning to them outside. It ignores the strike from the symbol, but you do get to preserve some of your burning that way, so it's not a huge DPS loss. Um, jurisdiction is your pistol five, is a comical amount of burning. Um, if you <laughs> hover on it, you generally are casting pistol five. Um, the explosion is 12 seconds of three stacks of burning, and the projectile alone is 12 seconds of two stacks of burning. Um, that is, uh, adding that up, that is 30,000 burning damage over 12 seconds. That's a ton of burning from a single skill. Um, as, as valuable as it is, it's also a long channel, which means that it's a lot of time that you're committing to pressing a skill that isn't refunding your cooldowns. So you want to do it after you've done all of your other things that are backloaded multi-hits, like your symbols and purging flames, for example. It's definitely worth going out of your way for that. It's very, very powerful, um, and there's a reason we bring off hand pistol now. Lastly, there's whirling light, which is our utility skill uh, that we bring alongside purging flames in the signet. 
Um, it's a ton of burning, or not a ton, it's a decent amount of burning damage. Um, but m more importantly, it's four multi-hits in a very short window of time, which means that it helps refund our big weapon skills. You might be um, convinced that comboing it with Persian Flames would be good because that gives you the Burning Bolts combo finisher, but Burning Bolts is generally pretty weak and not really comparable to, I think Confounding Bolts is what it's called, the Confusion one. Um, just press it when it's off cooldown, or press it when uh, your other skills are on cooldown to refund them. Um, you don't want to try to maximize comboing it for Burning Bolts. It's just not worth it. Uh, Ray of Judgment, which is focus four, is a ton of damage on Power Will Bender. Um, you apply it to your target, it strikes down, and then takes nine multi-hits over time, which is an incredible number of hits. And it's also backloaded, importantly, which means that even though it's on our back weapon set when we switch over to Greatsword, those multi-hits are still ticking while we're on Greatsword, which gives us a lot of mileage on our very first Greatsword switch and helps us do a ton of damage uh, from the outset. Rolling Wrath, which is Greatsword 2, is a skill that hits 14 times. There's an asterisk on that. You need to be standing inside of the boss because, if I can demonstrate here really quickly, um, let me switch to my power setup. Um, these projectiles uh, will fly in, in every direction. Um, so you need to be standing inside of the boss to make sure that all of those projectiles are hitting in order for you to get all 14 hits from Greatsword 2, which is why you'll often see a Guardian player walk into the boss and then back out while they're casting Greatsword 2. Um, it's a very powerful skill and absolutely worth that um, worth that little discomfort. Um, but it's also something worth keeping in mind because Sword 2 is a Shadow Staff that will move you to the outside of the boss and then you want to move back in for Greatsword 2. So just keep it in mind. Um, Sword of Justice is one of the two utility skills that you're going to bring. Um, it's it's four hits, which, as we discussed with Rolling Light, is valuable for refunding multi-hits. It's also a decent chunk of power damage, um, but its real value is twofold. One, the multi-hits that refund powerful skills, especially on Greatsword, and two, it's got a very short cast time, which, because our cooldowns are moving around so much, is good for weaving in spots that you would not be able to get an entire auto-attack chain before another skill comes off cooldown. So Sword of Justice helps fill these tiny gaps in your rotation that make um, the build really sing, as it were. Quick question. Um, what's up? Where is Ray of Judgment? Am I blind? Ray of Judgment is focus four. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just didn't have focus equipped. You're fine, no worries. Um, yeah, it's, it's a very, very, very powerful skill. Um... There are two relics that Willbender can bring, and those two relics will influence, or that Power Willbender can bring. Those two relics um, are going to influence our physical skill of choice. If you opt for a Fireworks relic, generally Whirling Light is better. It's got a shorter cast time, um, and it cleaves better. But if you're using Paytha for Power Lack, or you just prefer it on Power for some reason, Flash Combo is a ton of value. It's two Shadow Step staple to each other, um, and it helps us maintain uh, the Paytha uh, debuff on our target uptime while we're on Greatsword. Um, Repose is a Shadow Step, which is the back half of Flash Combo that you can use in Emergency either for Heal or to reapply the, um, the Dagger if you feel like you can, uh, leverage that. Be careful, Repose can interrupt actions like Rolling Wrath, so you don't want to be too, um, gung-ho about casting it, but it can be valuable. And for the last uh, variant of Willbender, or Willbender, we have the Willbender skill breakdown. Uh, Willbender flames become particularly useful here, uh, not for their damage, but because those additional multi-hits help us stack a ton of Might early from Holy Reckoning. Um, Willbender struggles with Might Ramp, so getting those early multi-hits down is very, very important. And having as many Virtues active as possible early on is also very important, because that means that each time each of them triggers, that's one stack of Might. Um, staff is mostly valuable for Empower. Um, Empower helps us ramp our might, but also Symbol of Swiftness, which is Staff 3, is very important. That saves us from having to commit a utility skill to maintain Swiftness, because um, Staff 3 is, I think, like 42 seconds of Swiftness uptime. It's insane. Oh it's God, a ton of Swiftness. A I should, yeah, it's, yeah, it's so much that. Swiftness. It's... Mine, so it's... on my heal brand, it's only 7.5 seconds, but it's a symbol, so it pulses it. Is that right? It pulses uh, seven times. Okay, so yeah, seven. Because there's seven, a base of five pulses seconds. and an additional two from rid of persistence. It's probably more. That's probably over fifty seconds. Then that's wild. Yeah, it's it's a lot. 
Um, well, a lot of your time on Wilmender would be spent camping uh, Hammer, just because Hammer autos are so powerful and do so much of what Wilmender wants. You do want to be switching back to Staff every 30 or so seconds, just to make sure that you're still maintaining your Swiftness cap in your group. Um, there are DPS builds that care about having Boons active. Wilbender is one of those. If you look at the trait um, in... Where is it? Where is that trait? So when we're increased damage for boons on you? Or yeah, Inspired Virtue, thank you. Okay. I can never remember if it's Inspired or Inspiring Virtue. I hate that they're named like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's a bunch of builds that care about number of active boons as a strike modifier, but also um, Warrior and Weaver care about having Swiftness specifically um as a strike damage modifier so you really want to make sure that you're babysitting Definitely, yeah. uh symbol of swiftness and your general swiftness up time and you were saying that there's a bit of a my ramp up thing there um and that you mainly would be swapping over to staff for maintaining swiftness so does that mean that once will mender gets might up to cap they generally are able to keep it there without having to necessarily yes. do staff four yeah, if you look okay. at um, Holy Reckoning, the base duration of Holy Reckoning might is 15 seconds per stack. Um, that's with no boon duration. So if I switch over to my healer build and then look at the trait, it's 26 and three quarter second per stack. Um, you can often and often you do want to recast um Staff four, just because getting those really, really big volume applications of might can be valuable, especially if you're managing downtime. And it's also a game. Heal. Yeah, it's a great heal. Um, staff has healing on staff four and staff two, so you can use those in emergency as well. And staff three um, to two. Yeah, three to two for Condi cleanse. Yep. You also get Condi cleanse on blasting uh, your auto attack symbols with, uh, with Ooh, yeah, hammer two. Hammer. Um, you can also blast any of your symbols uh, with staff two whether they're your hammer symbols or your staff symbol. And um, on the default configuration, casting F2 also cleanses two condies from all nearby allies. So you've got a, a decent chunk of condi cleanse. Um, completing your hammer auto attack symbol will, uh, or auto attack chain will set down a symbol of protection, which is huge. It grants protection to your allies. It's a multi-hit for triggering virtues and the symbols stack. Um, so each pulse of those symbols will heal your allies. Um, remember your blast finishers, because the build d does opt to bring Caracosa Relic. Uh, hold on, I'm reading what uh, Nomi said. Staff healing on Womander is really important sometimes because if you don't have something, you can visibly hit hammer healing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, your your key boons generally have such long uptime that it's fine if something ends up moving, but if you need to heal without something to hit, staff is crucial in that position. Um, you do have Holy Strike and Glacial Blow or Mighty Blow, depending on whether or not you're taking Glacial Heart. Um, you can blast finish with those to generate a lot of healing off of Caracosa. You can also combo uh, Mighty Blow or Glacial Blow with Hammer 4 Banish in order to combo them back to back. So you can go Hammer 2, Hammer 4, Hammer 2, Swap, Staff 2, and that triggers, all of those will trigger Caracosa for a ton of outgoing healing. Um, for each of the heal skills, they all have a ton of value, or most of them at least have value. Um, the ones of note are Receive the Light, which is a ton of healing. There's a reason why Wilmender opts for it as a default, but even DPS Wilmender can bring it. It's a pretty deceptively huge chunk of healing, even coming off a DPS build. Um, so if you're playing in a group that might need that extra bit of healing, Receive the Light is an important one to keep in mind. Um, Litany of Wrath is my preferred healing um, button generally. It's one of the strongest self-heal skills in the game. It's got a small upfront heal, but it then converts all of your outgoing heat outgoing damage for the next six seconds into incoming healing. 33% um, of the damage you're doing is coming back as healing. So let's say you're doing, you know, 20,000 DPS on a fight. Um, you would then be getting, uh, what is that? 6.6 thousand uh, healing per second, um, which is enough to live through some mechanics that you really have no business living through. Let me see if I can... <laughs> I have a uh, a recorded GIF of um yes is it OLC yeah yeah it's um there's a mechanic on OLC where the blue um the blue uh robot will suck and deal a ton of damage inside Great. of it. This doesn't but work yeah. on CM, but on normal mode, um you can watch my health fluctuate as I am taking tons of damage from that mechanic, but I am still healing up through the entire thing with Litany of Wrath. Yeah, Litany is incredibly powerful at letting you grieve through mechanics, and it plays really well with Wilbender's need to sort of maintain uptime in positions that you might not otherwise be able to get it. 
it's not going to stop you from taking the er, from dying the insta kill mechanics but most damage mechanics you can tank through with litany of wrath lastly there's reversal of fortune it's a little bit janky because it takes one hit it will immediately trigger the heal but it can't ignore entire mechanics like uh severe's unbridled tempest the big shockwave that launches you up in the air if you don't want to get launched you can proc reversal of fortune take the hit and then immediately go back to damaging without getting launched into the air. It's not as strong as uh, AED on Engineer, though. It doesn't let you ignore death, so don't get too risky with it. But once you know what mechanics you are and are not allowed to ignore with Reversal of Fortune, it's a very powerful skill. For non-damaging utility skills, um, for Condition Willbender, you are going to replace Signet of Wrath for any of these. And for power or power alacrity, you replace Sword of Justice. Bane Damage or Bane Signet contributes more damage than Sword of Justice does. Or Signet, excuse me. Bane Signet contributes more damage than Sword of Justice, so you want to replace Sword of Justice for whatever utility skill you would opt to bring. Um, Standard Ground is generally a pretty common skill to bring because it's very incredible. It's very useful and incredibly easy to just press the button and keep your squad from going down. Um, if your supports don't have enough stability for a given encounter, um, Standard Ground is a, is a no-brainer. It's a very powerful skill. Um, advanced is similar um, access to Aegis for your subgroup, which you can use to prevent mechanics like Deimos' Mind Crush. Um, it also gives Swiftness, kind of incidentally useful, but um, it's it's quite powerful regardless. If you are bringing it, you can also opt to use a charge of advance to keep Aegis up for Unscathed Contender. Um, I don't think I've gotten into talking about... No, I did talk about Unscathed Contender. Um, you need the Aegis uptime for that trait to give you its maximum damage buff. Um, and if you are bringing Advance, you can opt to use Advance to maintain that buff. Um, for additional break bar damage on top of Heaven's Palm, which we'll get into very briefly, um, Sanctuary or Bane Signet are uh, very powerful, even for Connie Wilbender or Wilbender. Bane Signet being the power Signet does 300 break bar damage instantly from range on a very short cooldown. I believe it's 20 seconds. Um, Sanctuary is quite powerful. It's not as powerful on Power Wilbinder or Power Alack because you don't bring Master of Consecrations, but on Condi or Wilbinder, excuse me, um, it's very powerful. It pulses, I believe, 1,050 uh, break bar damage. It's a ton. It's it's so much. Um, if you need a fast CC, you might want to opt for Bane Signet plus Heaven's Palm, but if you want like just a high volume CC, Sanctuary is incredibly hard to beat. Um, Wilbinder can also bring Hammer of Wisdom. It's a CC for break, heart, uh, break bar damage. It triggers Glacial Heart for emergency healing, as well as Blast Finishing for Karakosa. It's really powerful, and I don't think enough people pay attention to it, so it's worth keeping in mind. Um, wall of Reflection is there for mechanics like uh, Matthias's Blood Shards, but do keep in mind that it's a flat wall. It has different properties than something like Mesmer Feedback. Um, it's very strong, though. If you need to reflect, reflects are often quite hard to come by, and Wall of Reflection is a great way to have yeah. access to it. Um, and lastly, Bow of Truth is crucial burst healing for Wilmender. But DPS or Alak DPS can both bring it in a pinch if you need to patch up healing, if your group's bringing one healer for any reason, really, you can opt to bring Bow of Truth to um, help support your group. It's a lot like Receive the Light in that way. Bow of Truth is... I love Bow of Truth. Bow of Truth is so... I am bro an advocate of truth, for bringing... Bow of Truth, that is so much better. What's up? It sounded like you said Bro of Truth, and bro I really truth. like that. That would be better. <laughs> that would so be much better. Bro of truth. Um, it's I'm a big advocate for bringing uh, Zeal on Heal Firebrand because Zeal gives you an extra Bow of Truth. That's less powerful now that Glacial Blow or Glacial Heart is really strong, but it's still worth considering. Bow of Truth is just that good. It's so strong. Um, if you need any, like literally any amount of break bar damage, bring Heaven's Palm. There is zero reason not to bring it. If you're not bringing it, you're kind of throwing a little bit. Heaven's Palm is, or at least was for a very long time, a defining factor of playing Wilbender. Heaven's Palm is tremendously strong and worth keeping in mind, basically in all contexts. If you don't need Heaven's Palm, though, we can still talk about all of the other ones, because genuinely, all of them are valuable, even the racial elites. Feel My Wrath is useful to patch up bad for your quickness. Um, also it's, has it's, super speed now. It does have super speed now, which is useful for stuff like uh, River of Souls, I believe the encounter is called. Whatever's after mm -hmm. Soulless Horror. Really um, also, it's also really important so nice for Wilbender. Um, if you need to be responsible for a lot of your fury, it's um, Wilbender's only source of fury. If you don't commit your weapon to either sword or axe or your relic to yeah. um, Relic of the Midnight King. Yeah. So if you need Fury, Feel My Wrath is very important for Wilmender, which also gives Wilmender a cool niche of being an Alak source that patches up quickness, which can be kind of cool. 
Um, renewed focus can be really useful on fights with downtime to reset all of your virtues, including both charges of F2, um, which will let you start your opener again immediately, um, which can help you get back to really just applying tons and tons and tons of conditions on a lot of fights. You can also use it in some context to do a cool precast. Um, it's it's decent in um, fractals for that or on some IBS strikes because they're really short. And that'll let you stack up to four casts of your F2, which is 24 seconds minus however long the cast time of Renewed Focus is of your F2 uptime. Um, that's really valuable for Alacrity builds, especially in Fractals where you can leverage the Mistlock um, to then turn all of that into even more outgoing Alacrity. Um, Signet of Courage is kind of an incredible elite skill that I don't really think gets enough attention. It's good on Wilmender for a little bit of extra healing. Um, but the active effect of it does apply resolution and stability, and I've brought it on DPS builds just as an emergency stability button that doesn't need me to commit, you know, one of my DPS skills. Um, I used it on Harvest Temple CM uh, in a group that I was filling for um, because we needed a CC or we needed a stability source for one mechanic that we didn't have access to, but we had CC more than covered from a uh, heal chrono, for example. It's really, really powerful and worth keeping. <laughs> And then after all of those, basically every racial elite that deals damage can be pretty powerful since none of the Guardian elite skills are a consistent DPS gain. Say you're going into a fight where you're not going to get an opportunity to cast Renewed Focus to redo your opener. Then you can bring like Sylvan Hounds or Hounds of Balthazar or Miss Firewolf or whatever if you don't need any CC and you want the damage. Um, they're worth keeping in mind. They're not what I would default to, but if you have access to them, if you're, you know... If your Guardian is a human or a Silvari or you bought the Guild Wars Deluxe Edition, those are elite skills worth keeping in mind. You can precast them and they do contribute, even if it's not a ton. So how do you think about playing Woolbender? Um, you want to maintain justice on Kandi Woolbender at all times. Um, power just wants to maintain any virtue for um, the buff that you get from it. Uh, it's also not as strict about refunding all of your cooldowns. Quite the same as Condi Wilbender, but Justice is a ton of burning, and all three of those stances will uh, contribute to your cooldown reduction via multi-hits. Um, and then as such, all of those multi-hit skills are critical. They're generally our highest sources of DPS, whether that's our Symbols, or Peacekeeper, or Rolling Light, or Flash Combo, or Purging Flames, or whatever. All of them are really powerful and will either let us leverage restorative virtues or get refunded by restorative virtues. It's it's kind of a feedback loop in that regard, and it's very powerful as a result. Um, and without Alacrity, you can't really maintain the stance from Rushing Justice as, as well. If you... Um, rushing Justice has a 10 and a quarter second cooldown after um, getting reduced by Virtue of Resolution. Or no. Uh, excuse me, Power of the Virtuous. Um, and then after Alacrity, that gets reduced to 8.16 seconds. Um, the buff up time that you get from Justice is 8 seconds long, though, um, which means that there's always going to be a little bit of downtime. And if Alacrity lapses, that's even more downtime that you're not going to be applying Burning, which is a pretty big loss. Um, so you really, really want to make sure that you're trusting your Alac provider and or you're in the subgroup with the heal Alac because they're generally applying higher volume Alacrity than Alac DPS would. Um, your symbols and Purging Flames, which I kind of think of as an honorary symbol, um, are critical for Woodbender. Um, more hits means more triggers on Restorative Virtues or Holy Reckoning. That's all always powerful. They're also huge damage on Power Woodbender. Uh, they're strong specifically because of... Where's the trait? Um, symbolic Exposure gives you additional damage. Your symbols deal more strike damage. Um it, Every build that has them cares about Guardian Symbols. They're very powerful. Um, with that power comes a little bit of discomfort. Um, symbols are static AoEs on the ground, which means that if a boss is liable to move out of them, like Anka jumping around in Shun Jade Junkyard, they can be kind of a liability. So you want to kind of make sure that you're using them in positions where they're going to get their most value. Uh, if a boss moves out of them, then you cast a symbol for nothing, basically. Lastly, you literally always want to be hunting for Cleave at all times. Um, getting cleave means that your virtues are procking more often, which is more burning and more restorative virtues, which means that you can then refund your cooldowns more and then get more cleave, which is more burning and more restorative virtues. You really want to lean into that mobility. Um, that cleave is so valuable that the, I think the patch record clear on Voice of the Fallen and Claw of the Fallen and Iceberg Saga has eight woolbenders in it, almost doing a hundred thousand damage. Oh my percent. god. 
Yeah, I'm gonna pull up that log actually, just yeah, because I, I think it's that. it's it's incredible to illustrate what I'm talking about. Okay, let's pull up Wingman real quick. Strikes, bears. Or wait, no, I want to see the record. Um, records for this patch. Is that not? We mean it's very temperamental. It can be. Uh, voice claw. Here we go. This is the record log. I'm pretty sure. Oh no. Yeah. Um, I Aww. can't pull up the log, but it's 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 a, so it's a ton of damage. There. It's an absolute ton of damage. Um, I I would not be surprised if a strong Wilbinger player was able to break a hundred thousand DPS on that fight. It's the, the cleave is that critical. Um, make sure you're always looking for it. Um, actually, I have another way that I can illustrate this. Hold on. Let me pull this up real quick. This is a image that I took a long time ago while doing, um, I was doing Harvest Simple on Condi Wheelbender. Um, I want you to find in this image where a bunch of ads got pulled on a stack immediately following your Primordis phase. <laughs> yeah that jump to 175,000 dps um that's what cleave does cleave make so sure you're looking for cleave cleave is incredible it's very important and finding it is both one of the key parts of maximizing will and in my opinion one of the most fun parts of playing it so for the rotation concepts and how to approach playing the build mechanically um you want to keep your key virtues active on deep on connie will that's going to be obviously your f1 and as well as F2 and F3, if other skills aren't being cast um, on Power Bender, it's just as long as a virtue is active. Um, you then want to place your uh, high damage skills in order of priority. So your symbols are your backloaded multi hits and then high damage skills, kind of like Greatsword 3 or Jurisdiction. Um, and then anything that would refund those faster than just auto attacking, whether that's Whirling Light or whatever. Um, you want to get those skills back quickly so you can continue to do the things that deal a lot of damage. Um, like I mentioned, Condition Wilbinner wants to keep Rushing Justice active 100% of the time. Even though Purging Flames is most of our damage, it is still critical to keep Rushing Justice active because that turns all of our damage into burning. Um, it's very, very, very important. Having a Virtue active is also important, but Rushing Justice for Condi Wilbinder is particularly a standout. Um, you also want to practice your opener for power and Condi DPS because of restorative virtues causing that rotation to fluctuate. Having a precise and consistent opener is going to make you feel a lot more confident and make your damage a lot better. Um, your rotational Wilbinder, more so than most other builds, is emergent from that really powerful opener, so you want to practice that over and over and over again to make sure that you get it drilled down to a science. Um, I said this before and I'll say it again. Use your mobility to find opportunities to speed up that cooldown reduction or generate more burn or alacrity with that cleave. It's very powerful. For gearing Wilbinder, uh, Power Wilbinder has a very, very low crit chance because we don't take Radiance, Radiance, which is where Guardian's crit chance usually comes from. So we lean in on a ton of that gearing um, flexibility to get the uh, precision that we need. Lots of Assassin's gear, sigil of accuracy, and often precision runes like Golemancer. Um, while not necessary, you can bring Dragon Hunter, but that requires obviously a lot more um, Assassin's gear. Um, the sigil can clash with um, stacking slaying or night sigils for some content. The stacking sigils and night sigils are obviously standouts for harvest temple, slaying for fractals. Um, you can get around that at a minor loss, um, but you do need basically full assassin's gear and golemancer runes. Um, there's no other efficient way to do that. Um, Relic of Patha also has potential, but it's a bit uncomfortable. The internal cooldown being locked at four seconds means that your um, cleave will often clash with it. And the debuff applied by Relic of Patha is single target, uh, which means that you don't get as much out of cleaving, uh, which is generally why you would want to play Power Wilbinder in the first place relative to like Dragon Hunter. Um, so Fireworks is generally more consistent and applies its damage modifier to all enemies because Patha applies to whoever the dagger hits, but Fireworks applies to you as the player. So all of your outgoing damage benefits from the Fireworks. Um, this build brings Sword Focus and Great Sword. Those are the highest damage sources for um, DPS Wilbinder. Power Alacrity Wilbender is very similar in terms of the stipulations regarding the crit cap, but it uses Ruins of the Pack because that's a free 15% boon duration and also a ton of precision. It does exactly like the two things that we needed to do. And it leans on Patha Relic a lot. 
It's a lot less uncomfortable here because we don't have cooldown reductions to worry about and the rotation is structured in such a way that you leverage Paper Relic basically as much as you can. Um, so it's not nearly as uncomfortable, but it is something worth keeping in mind, obviously. It's going to hurt your cleave damage a little bit since you aren't applying that buff to everyone. Um, you can also use Offhand Sword in this build, which is something that no other Guardian builder really gets to do. Willbender Sword was, or Offhand Sword was kind of locked to PvP or World v. World for a while, but it actually has a niche in PvE now as a result of Power Alacrity Willbender. Um, it I has, really like that. I, I, I love getting to use the Elite. I said this on, I think, the previous stream. I love getting to use the Elite spec weapons, like the ones that are for that Elite spec, with that Elite spec. So I, I love that we get agree. to use the sword for it. I, I'm really glad that there's an opportunity for us to use it now, too, because honestly, if you look at Focus, it's everything Willbender wants. Focus is a ton of damage. It's a backloaded multi-hit that rewards, like, that regenerates cooldowns on Greatsword. Um, two buttons that both proc fireworks. Like, it's it's everything Willbender could possibly dream of. Um, but because of the structure of the Alak Willbender rotation being a lot more aggressive with when it's swapping weapons, you actually get a lot of mileage out of the fact that Offhand Sword has lower cooldowns than Focus does, which is really big. Um, you also don't get the cooldown refund, so the shorter cooldowns are even stronger there accordingly. Um, it also has a fixed loop rotation, which is something that um, Tony Wilbender can share. I'll get into that in just a moment. Um, but some players might find practicing a fixed loop a lot more intuitive than managing restorative virtues and having a constantly fluctuating priority list. I know that's intimidating for a lot of players. I really like it. I have a hard time managing rotations and adjusting on in, in content on the fly if that's an expectation, but I find it really easy to deal with a priority list in similar circumstances. Other people have different, you know, needs or wants from a build. So it's 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 cool that Ulbender has those options. It's cool in general that there are yeah, like that ver the varying play styles i guess like all of the I, I have some agree. similar things but like from class to class or from spec to spec to spec um yeah it's cool how they each kind of have something that's a little bit different about them absolutely i super agree um connie Wilbender optimally uses both runes and then enough vipers gear to cap burn duration and then sinister gear on your accessories to fill out the rest for condition damage um you can also use the Firebrand setup with full Vipers and Trapper runes, like I mentioned earlier. It's a pretty minor loss, but if you plan on playing both builds, one of them is going to have to take a hit. So if you want your Woodbender to take a hit so you can have an optimal Firebrand setup, then you can totally lean on that. That's fine. Um, there are two variants um, under Condi Woodbender, though. There's the Pistol Pistol and then nothing in the main hand with an offhand Torch in the second with Fractal Relic, which is a bit easier than the next option and less fragile to dropping or dropped hits affecting our rotation because uh, the next version expects a certain pacing of cooldown reduction, but it has a lower ceiling in some contexts and it follows a priority list. And then there's Pistol Torch Scepter Pistol with a Warrior Relic, which reduces our, cool our weapon swap uh, cooldown time. It's a much harder rotation. Um, it's very tight and it ha it's more, more vulnerable to boss movement disrupting its cooldown reduction, but it has a fixed loop rotation, which again, some players might prefer and a potential slightly higher ceiling. Having multi-hits on Scepter 2 means that you get more out of cleave, and that can be beneficial uh, to even have access to, even if you're, you know, camping on Pistol Torch to leverage that cooldown reduction. Lastly, Wilmender. Use the same gear as Heal Firebrand, except you replace the Axe and Shield with a Hammer. Like we got into a bunch earlier, Hammer symbols trigger Holy Reckoning very efficiently as well as patching up, or as well as patching up our otherwise poor protection uptime. Because without that, our only sources of protection, without committing to, I believe, hold the line, um, are going to be F3 and Shield 4. And you'd rather save Shield 4 for Aegis if you're bringing it, so you may as well just bring Hammer in the first place. Um, the healing via Rate of Persistence is also not to be written off. It's really, really good at overflow healing into the other subgroup. It's just very powerful. Um, lastly, Karakosa is the ideal relic for this build, but Monk also works totally fine. Uh, Monk has slightly higher sustained healing. It lessens your ability to burst heal a little bit, but if you're bringing um, Glacial Heart, then Monk boosts that burst healing as well, and it ends up working out just fine. Whatever you have access to is going to be whatever's best. Um, now, what fights is Willbinder a standout option on? Uh, Power Willbinder is really powerful on uh, Harvest Temple CM. It gets a lot out of its mobility and Heaven's Palms uh, rapid CC access. And Dragon Hunter traps are kind of a liability. I know Soul Beast players will um, understand oh, how God. traps can be very frustrating on that fight because They're the so boss will flip from an ally to an enemy, 
and that doesn't count as an enemy entering the AoE of the trap, which will then cause the trap not to trigger, and that's missed damage. Um, there's also weirdness with where you need to place the traps and stuff. It's just uh, oftentimes not worth contending with. Uh, Willbender is also really powerful in that fight. Having access to Willbender's Glut of Mobility is really powerful for green kiting. Um, and it's also really useful just to have access to a lot of Guardians' high-impact utility, like, you know, Stand Your Ground, Sanctuary, um, whatever other options your fight might need, or your group might need, Willbender probably has access to. Um, Power Alacrity Willbender can also somewhat fill the gap left by Divern and Fractals. You don't generate your Alacrity during downtime because you don't have anything to hit, but you do get more concentration in Fractals at baseline to compensate a little bit, and you can also do, like, F2, F2, um, Renewed Focus, F2, F2, and each cast of F2 will also provide some Alacrity to your group, um, to help stop that, uh, Alacrity from falling off so precipitously if you have downtime. Power Alacrity Wilbinder also pairs well with Quick DPS Herald in one healer squads to fill all key boons uh, without a healer. Um, it's really, really valuable because a lot of higher end groups do opt for just one healer. So having Power Alacrity Wilbinder uh, covering a lot of the offensive boons and then Quick DPS Herald covering a lot of the defensive ones, you're getting a lot of the same value. Um, additionally, Power Alacrity Wilbinder is also a region source. So if you're playing in a one healer group with another Quick DPS and someone is playing um, a Chaos Mesmer, and they need access to regen. Um, Willbender, while its regen is not strong when not built for, does provide 100% regen uptime, so that's worth keeping in mind. Um, Condition Willbender, especially, does exceedingly well on fights with high opportunities for Cleave. Kining Overlook and Junlai J Junkyard and their CMs are off, um, obviously big examples of this. Anka has a ton of ads that she spawns, and there's the two enemy faces on Kining Overlook that you can leverage. Voice Claw, as I mentioned earlier in Icebrood Saga, is very powerful for Worldbender because you can stack the two bears and then do just tons and tons of damage. And then in raids, um, Gorsival, Sabatha, and Slothasaur are particular fights of note for opportunities for lots of cleave. And also, if there's any fight where mobility just seems valuable, Worldbender is probably good there. Um, mobility is a strong tool. Worldbender has more of it than most um, builds in the game. So having, if there's a fight where it's valuable, Wilbinder is generally pretty plug-and-play there as a powerful option. For other modes, um, Power and Condi Wilbinder are both very strong in open world. Uh, Power Wilbinder has a lot of ability, which is very comfortable. Um, it's got a lot of utility. It's got a lot of ranged access and like Sword of Justice and stuff like that. And it's got great melee damage. And Condition Wilbinder is very, very survivable against champions and during difficult metas just because of Litany of Wrath. And also F2 at a baseline proccing will heal you. Um, but because justice is required for a large portion of the burn, if you're playing it in open world, you basically need JTEC protocols or some a friend that can constantly provide alacrity to you. Um, Power Wilbinder is a bit of a boogeyman in PvP and World v. World. Uh, people really hate it. People hate dying quickly. Um, you don't really feel like you have a lot of agency, and as a result, it can be really strong in P uh, PvP ranked, but it fies, falls off in high-level coordinated play, like automated tournaments. Um, where it can be targeted by bad matchups or outnumbered pretty easily. Um, you are a guardian, you are fragile, um, getting outnumbered is going to be pretty dangerous for you. Um, but if you're just playing ranked and you want to build that's really fun to play, Willbender is totally fine and will get you very far. Um, and then a ton of variants of Willbender are excellent rumors in World v. World. I've heard of Forge Relic, or Forge Runes, I've heard of Selly Willbender, Power Willbender, Condi Willbender. Um, the big differentiating factor between PvP and World v. World is that uh, Willbender has two ammo charges on Flowing Resolve, whereas as a result of a nerf uh, in, I think, 2022, it only has one in SPVP, um, which means that Willbender can disengage a lot easier and roam around and play sort of the diet thief role a lot more reliably. Um, questions and answers. That's the end of the presentation. There's going to be more, uh, more practicing and helping people learn after this. But for now, I just want to take a second to answer any immediate questions after um, I just spent a whole hour talking about a single elite specialization. <laughs> Give chat a second here to type up any questions they've got. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, thank you for that overview. Yeah. Lots of great stuff in there. Um, Really cool. Uh, yeah, I didn't realize there was quite that many like builds for Willbender out there because, um, you know, on Snow Crows, there's, you know, a couple of builds for them on there, but we don't necessarily publish all builds to yeah. Snow Crows, just like generally Power the Wilbender ones that are most it doesn't have anyone stewarding it on Snow Crows right now, so it's kind of lacking as a result. Um, 
Then there's, you know, the two variants of Connie Wilbender and the, the site doesn't publish that. There's also variants of Wilbender that I didn't really get into. You can totally play Monk with uh, Axe Shield Staff, the same Firebrand setup. Um, you have a little bit less in the way of multi-hits, but you also have access to, um, and you also need to bring Hold the Line, but you have access to Fury as a result, which can be pretty valuable. Um, like, there's a ton of options in the spec. There's a ton of options in the spec. I've seen people talk about playing uh, Greatsword Longbow, Alacrity, Willbender, um, and then using Heaven's Palm in the rotation to trigger Paytha Relic. Um, like, there's there's a lot of variety in the build, and a lot of them are within a pretty reasonable margin of each other. Like, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think the ceiling for the Warrior Relic Scepter Pistol rotation this patch is 46k DPS, which is obviously a lot and will probably get nerfed. Um, but the... Scepter or the pistol, 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 torch rotation, it caps at like 45.6, I think, thousand DPS. So you, you're trading 400 DPS for a more consistent rotation. So it's a lot of like pick your poison type stuff. The spec has a ton of variety and it's really, really, really engaging as a result. All right. And without any um, additional questions, um, I, I just wanted to get into the. Um, get into the training area and help people practice the spec. Um, we've got a group going right now. And y'all are welcome to practice and ask questions and help figure stuff or uh, figure stuff out as needed. Um, and I'm happy to help um, along the way. So Tracy, you said you were going to be learning um, Condi Lack or not Condi Lack, excuse me, Condi DPS. Um, perhaps my plan coming to this tonight, although I'm going to admit I'm Really tired right now. Oh, no, you're fine. No, no sweat. worries. Long week. Yeah. I appreciate you showing up in any case. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, seriously. Um. Yeah, I know like nothing as far as the actual rotation goes on these for the most part. I feel like I need to completely <laughs> relearn Quick Brand again too. Now that it's using pistols. But I uh, I can get into the rotation concepts on power and Condi Wilbinder, the opener on Wilbinder, and I can kind of speak to Alacrity, um, but I'm very out of practice with it, so I don't mm -hmm. want to get deep in the weeds with it because I yeah. don't want to give people bad expectations and stuff. I mean, the only one I personally have set up is uh, Power Alac Wilbinder, mm -hmm. um, and the rest I don't have enough templates for, I think. <laughs> you have a, uh, a heel brain geared? Mm-hmm. Then you do have a template for it. Yes, but that means that I gotta like swap stuff around. That's fair. I'm mostly kidding. <laughs> yeah. Um, you just switch the the trait set when you use a tab for that, and then you switch a hammer. That's true. Very true. Um, I need to have a tab available to save, but because I never remember what I need to change shit back to. I've got way yeah, too many builds. Yeah, me neither. So I have to have. That's a tab why for I have everything. different templates for. Um, Condi DPS and Condi Alak Spectre, mm -hmm. even though there's a single trait different between them, it helps me <laughs> like actually not yep. not fuck up my alacrity. Same. Um, um, if you watch my screen share real quick, I'm going to go yeah. over the opener real quick for yeah, Wilbinder, because I feel like this is the one that a lot of people are going to play just because it's very easy. Yeah, I think but the, that's the opener really is a little bit first. weird. If you're going to so I'm going to just sort of break down what it does. Wilbender, probably, yeah. Wilbender is a, like in general, I feel like healing classes, healing classes are a good place to kind of start because there isn't as much pressure for a rotation as there is in DPS. As there um, isn't a DPS. I, class, I kind but... of agree with that. On like there are some builds where it's kind of stressful. Like I know yeah. like managing CA on Druid can be kind of stressful and mm -hmm. there's a lot of moving pieces on heal brand that can be, but Wilbender has so few moving parts that if you really want to learn how to heal, mm -hmm. it's really like the bare fundamentals of how do I heal. Mm -hmm. Um so for your opener, the first thing that you're going to do is make sure all of your virtues start getting cast because those virtues getting cast is going to be giving you triggers of Holy Reckoning if, uh, and F2 is Phoenix Protocol. Um, one of those, you want the Wilbender Flames on the boss, and then you want to get Symbol of Swiftness down and then Empower for your instant might ramp, and then you immediately switch over to Hammer and you start auto-attacking. Um, I'm going to change my setup a little bit, actually. There's also, I forgot to mention this, or rather I didn't because I didn't want to overcrowd everyone's, like, brain. There's also, like, a DPS hybrid version of Wilbinder that you can play, where you bring Unscathed Contender and Power for Power and Inspiring Virtue and Bane Signet. And because Hammer Autos are so powerful, you end up doing, like, 12k DPS just auto-attacking. 
So if a fight is like relatively low pressure, um, you can opt to bring a lot of offensive tools to help contribute to your group's DPS output a lot more. Um, but I'm going to play what I would consider probably a more standard setup right now. Here we go. So um, I'm also going to bring Feel Your or Feel Your Wrath just in the event that we are assuming that you do need to provide a large portion of uh, Fury. Let me grab um, Quickness just to demonstrate. Okay. So your opener, you're going to want to cast all of your F skills. So I'm going to start with F3, hit F2, F1 in, drop your symbol, empower immediately. Feel my wrath. I did that a little bit late. And then you want to just start going in and auto attacking. You're dropping symbols. Those symbols are going to start healing and pulsing. Um, cast your virtues off cooldown early on because you want to make sure that you're generating a lot of might. But as you can see, there is a lot, a lot of symbols getting stacked right here. Um, and all of those symbols are going to be healing. If you need the extra healing, you can blast Hammer 2 for Karakosa. And then you drop in here, get some extra might, get some extra healing, go back in, make sure you're dropping that symbol for some might. It's very, very simple. Um, on on um, Staff, really, you just want to be hitting in power and symbol of swiftness. And on Hammer, you just want to be auto-attacking and then hitting Glacial Blow in an emergency. If um, Hammer of Wisdom, great CC, that's healing. What's up? I was going to say, if there's a single thing that you take away from Guardian in a general sense, it's that put down your symbols and do stuff in them. True. That's a good <laughs> a good way to live your life. Um, also, interesting thing to note, um, if you're on a fight with very high condition pressure um, and you have a lot of virtuosos, you actually don't even need to bring absolute resolve. All of your symbols are light fields. Which means that if your virtuosos who aren't providing their own sim or their own um, combo fields are going to be throwing around a ton of projectile finishers, all of which have a chance to do cleansing bolts, which then cleanses your allies. So you then turn your virtuoso friends into condi cleanse machines, okay, which okay. is very, very, very worth keeping Might in mind. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you need a condi cleanse, if you bring it, you can also F2 for it. Um, there's tons and tons of ways to configure uh, heal will bender. Um, let me just turn this off. Mm, I do like purging flames too, no, I mean. It's. Pardon me while I'm like. Purging flames is definitely the dinner. best option as an on demand uh, Condi cleanse. Mm -hmm. um, but I often like bringing more specific tools like um, Stand Your Ground um, if I can help it. But knowing that that is an option for support builds as well is definitely a good call out for sure. It's also just nice, like. Because <clears throat> I think it's still on. <sighs> it's on one of the condi, other condi builds out there for Guardian, I think. Unless they got rid of it. But it's just nice, like, yeah, so, like, it's on a non-heal um, build. For, I think yeah. one of the Firebrand condi builds, or both, I don't know. But the that's other thing nice we're noting, for by the way, show. about Purging Flames is that um, your symbols, or not your symbols, your combo fields are prioritized in order of uh, recency, which means that symbols can disrupt you trying to blast uh, might off of your Purging Flames. So be really careful with that. Um, it could be useful in the opener in the event that like you don't um, you don't have any pre-existing symbols down and you can like guaranteed blast it. Um, but it's not going to be sustainable throughout the rotation. But at that point, you probably mm -hmm. don't need it. It's just worth keeping in mind. Yeah. All right. Now let me do the opener for Condi Woolbender. Um, my Condi Wilbender play is a little bit rusty just because I have played a ton of Guild Wars in the past couple of weeks, and also the pistols have changed up a lot of how the build functions. Um, but I can still go into like the general fundamentals of how the build works. Um, let me just the go pistol, apply all like, of Like that icon for Pistol 4 is like really cool looking. Pistol 4 I like in it. particular, Pistol 5 too. I'll, also, I really like the like the idea behind pistol five that I you agree. sit there and you charge it and then you blast it like de depending on you know how much you want to do it for like you yeah. mouse over pistol five really quick yeah there's three different charge levels yeah. on pistol there's five a bunch of different charge levels it's, just, it's really neat um i will say uh with pistol five um in your opener if you can precast you always do the third charge level um if you can't precast 
Um, just double tap uh, and fire off the first charge and then start your rotation as normal. Um, and then inside of your rotation, um, it's structured in such a way that you would all basically always want to do charge level three. Um, thank you, Cora. So anyway, you did start blasting. Um, anyway, the general opener for the rotation is going to be casting F2 twice, and then you start charging jurisdiction. And then once you charge jurisdiction, you want to detonate it on your target and then go in with F3 or F1 rather, and then start your rotation. Um, I would obviously recommend deferring to Snow Crows, just referencing the opener there, but I can sort of give a visual demonstration of how the rotation works. So I'm going to start that, charge it up, fire it off, F1 in, drop that down. Uh, I fucked up already. I have a Band-Aid on my finger. Um, <laughs> oh, no. I cut myself earlier. <laughs> so I accidentally hit uh, Pistol 2 um, instead of Pistol 3 because my finger is wider than I am used to. <laughs> I like that um, my nails done <clears throat> about a month ago now and... <laughs> my nails are too long, so I keep... I just tried to file one of them down. It's just my middle fingernail that's a problem. So whenever I'm pressing W and I need to, like, oh, no. move to, like, press, press like, one at the same time or something like that, I end up... My nail hits two or three. Three most of the time. <laughs> that's so tragic. <laughs> it's very tragic. All right. Let me try again. Nothing can bring me down. Get that charged up. You have to re-detonate it to get the cast out, and then you hit Hail of Justice, and then you go into the rest of your rotation... Glorious combination of skills. Something kind of generally like that. Um the, the 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 rotation kind of comes out of your opener as you understand your priority list. I wouldn't really advise practicing a Wilbender bench so much as I would really pra advise um, getting a lot of practice in on um, the opener and then figuring out how to follow up from there. I know a lot of uh, Wilbender players that do have recorded the bench have struggled um, with that bench in that the rotation kind of falls apart later in. Not that it's like bad, not that the rotation is like bad later in, it's just that um, small variables start compounding over time because of restorative virtues and that can be kind of complicating. Um, if you want a more generally fixed rotation though, Power Woolbender has a much more traditional one of those. I am currently on the... Why do I have the Fractal Relic of my Power Woolbender? How did that happen? <laughs> Here we go. Um, for Power Bender, um, the general things worth keeping in mind are the hits on Sword of Justice. Oh. Um, I took the bandaid off. My finger is still bleeding. I'm not going to do this rotation for a moment. I'm going to go upstairs and fix that. Go grab but, a bandaid. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sword of Justice, I will demonstrate this real quick, um, goes down and then has a wind up before it starts hitting. Um, in your opener, you cast Sword of Justice very early because of that windup, because you want to start stacking all your multi-hits at once. Um, that way you can get predictable results out of them. The Power Bender opener is very tricky as a result. Um, but yeah, I will be right back. Okay. So, yeah, interesting. Has the I didn't know that there were two charges on Reversal of Fortune there. Here, let me swap it while Pixel's off running around doing some stuff. Swap it back to my stream here. Um... I definitely don't remember that having two different things. Okay, so this guard yourself with that negating the next incoming strike and healing you instead, even if the strike would have been lethal. I didn't realize that Wilbender got that. And I can't believe it has two charges. I mean, granted, it's only like a one second. It takes it. Yeah, that's wild. So now not only do you basically have access to two charges of something that will stop a lethal attack which allows you to skip things like the severe shockwave but you also have litany of wrath which generally lets you like skip stuff too as pixel was talking about earlier although i don't think litany of wrath would save you from severe um shockwave because that it heals you based on the amount of damage that you're dealing and the shockwave is kind of like a like you are hit and you are down so I am back. And regarding um, Sabir and Litany, you can bring Litany on Sabir. You don't need Reversal of Fortune to ignore that mechanic. You can actually oh, you just can shadow step past it. Okay. 
Um, Litany won't skip the mechanic, but you can bring it if you want it. Um, oh, you can yeah. shadow step past the shockwave with F3 or Sword 2, um, and those are options. Or uh, flash combo if you're opting to bring that. You don't need um, Whirling Light on the Fireworks build. You can totally bring flash combo on Sabir if you want to try to lean into using the shadow step to skip that mechanic. So you've got options. Yeah, oh, um, Fortune's very interesting. I'm surprised I had never looked into that before. It's a very cool skill. Um, it gets triggered by any hit. So on Severe specifically, it can be kind of tricky um, because the little shockwaves that shoot out of the small tornadoes can trigger yeah, reversal of fortune. And then you get hit by the big shockwave yeah. and that downs you immediately. So you got to be very, very, very careful. Do. Yeah. Um, but the opener is kind of similar to Connie Wilbender. You open with F3 as well because it helps you get your uh, Aegis generating really quickly. Um, important thing to note for the fireworks rotation, um, Crushing Courage has a um, cooldown longer than 20 seconds, which means that it counts as a trigger for fireworks. So your fireworks triggers on Power Wolfbender are going to be F3, um, Focus 4, Focus 5, and Greatsword 5, because you don't have any other uh, options to trigger it there. But your opener on Power Wolfbender is going to look generally something like this. Nothing can bring me down. Ah, oh, fuck, I canceled the uh, symbol. It's so easy to clip that symbol if you're trying to go too fast in the opener. Greatsword is still kind of fiddly, even after Anet uh, was kind enough to rework the weapon, so... Let me... Just to be sure. Defense, then offense. There we go. Something like that. Nice. Um, I am not nearly as good at uh, Power Wilbender as I am at Condi Wilbender, but the rotation is very fun and very interesting and very, very, like, novel. It feels different than Dragon Hunter, so if you kind of like Power Guardian, but Dragon Hunters didn't do it for you, it might be worth trying Power Wilbender. And then lastly, um, there's the Alak Wilbender setup. Um... I am not as good at Alacrity Wilbender as I am at uh, Power, and I'm not as good at Power as I am at Condi, so I'm, I I don't really feel equipped to demonstrate. Um, I don't believe you can survive um, Deimos Mind Crush with Reversal. I think you need specifically, like, an Aegis. I don't think that, like, because um, uh, Renewed Focus doesn't work. I know Shelter doesn't work, stuff like that. So you've got to be very, very careful. Um... Anyway, the, the important things to note on the um, rotation for a Lackwobender are that you have a limited amount of time where you can trigger uh, Resolve. It's a six second buff. If you can see up at the top of that, it's a full Resolve six seconds. Um, but because of sort of justice, having a little bit of a wind up, a lot of times in the rotation, you're going to end up doing something like sort of justice, F2, stuff. Um, and because you're casting sort of justice before your F2, that means that you're basically front loading that cast time so you can get a little bit of extra value out of F2 for that extra quickness. So when you're casting F2, make sure you're casting Sword of Justice just before that. Um, and then you're you're good to go. The last thing is um, throughout the rotation, there's a general structure where you're gonna be casting F or like Sword of Justice F2 and then other stuff. Um, because of the way the rotation is structured, there are going to be op opportunities where F2 is not off cooldown. You just F3 in that position instead. Um, F2 is obviously your highest priority because that's where your alacrity comes from, but if you can't cast it, you do the same rotation with F3 instead. So most of the time, are you pairing Sword of Justice and F2 together then? Yeah, because you use okay. Sword of Justice in your opener a little bit more aggressively, I think. Um, and then after that, it's sort of, sort of Justice F2 into other stuff generally. Okay, so you're not necessarily trying to immediately get all your Sword of Justice counts all the way down to like zero. It's just kind of like you're doing it when you're doing F2. Yeah, exactly. Or F3. If, yeah. If F2 is on cooldown. It sounds like the, there's a particular point in the rotation in which you do that. That's yeah. 
It's it's almost always um well actually I think you do both on either sword or great sword. They exist on, on both weapon sets. I have a typed out rotation that I can go reference real quick. Oh nice. I didn't delete it. There it is. Okay. Yeah, so it's great sword four, two, three, five, uh flash combo. You do F1 and then a single, uh, and then an auto chain, the great sword one. Yeah, then you do sort of just as F2. But there's a lot of times in the rotation where you're gonna do something like this, and then I'll give you your Patha, and then you'll do other stuff, um, and then the Patha will go away, and then you can repose back, and that will fire the dagger that re ups Patha. Is um, there an icon like in your buff bar for Patha? Not on your buff bar. It's it's the dagger that appears above the enemy's head. So if I shadow step oh. to him, you see the knife. That's the Patha up time. It's the same thing that's um, there for. Um... Dragon Hunter runes. Yeah, it's it's a little uncomfy um, on bosses that are like gigantic because you need to yes. zoom all the way out and then see above their head. It's but, kind of um, pain on Untamed for me. Because <laughs> power, um, Alakwa Binder has a fixed rotation. If you're doing the rotation properly, you don't need to track your Patha uptime. It just okay. happens. Um, the rotation is structured in such a way that the cooldowns are paced four seconds apart. So you're going to be getting the Patha procs when you need them. OK, so approximately every four seconds, you're going to be doing some type of shadow step skill. Yeah, so like if I go, I'm gonna pull Do up all your virtues the... count as shadow steps. Uh, no, Just your three? shadow steps are going to be flash combo, mm -hmm. repose, sword five, and sword two, and F3. Okay, those are your shadow steps. Um, I can hear, uh, pull up blush pad. Oh, I had it written in here last. Oh, cool. nice. Um, so, like, if you look at this rotation, F3, you have a shadow step. And then sword two is sword inside the ICD, so it doesn't pair. matter. Swap. Then... Great sword. Four, two, three, five. Flash combo. This has been about four seconds. F1, auto, auto, sword of justice, F2. Four seconds after that, you repose. Which one's flash combo again? Uh, oh, that one's that one. Okay, you... That's right. It's the util. Yeah. Um, and then you go back to sword. You do four. And the two happens um, about four seconds after your repose. Four, four, um, two, five four. often doesn't get used to maintain Patha because it's just okay. it's just better to use the skill when you have it. But you have so many shadow steps that it doesn't really matter. Yeah. But yeah, you use flash combo on greatsword to fill up your uh, shadow steps because uh, obviously greatsword doesn't have any, and sword has so many that it doesn't matter. Yeah. I do like that there's. Whenever there's a pattern to yeah. both sets, I really enjoy it. So, like, Great Sword in particular, I enjoy the pattern on it because it's very clear that you, you go into it. Yeah, on, yeah. yeah Great Sword you is almost always it. you just do four, two, five, three. Exactly. Your, your number one priority is putting down your symbol. Your second priority is spinning in that symbol. And then you do whatever skills you have left. Your next two big skills, yeah. which are five and three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, five and three. And then that's it. And then you're good. And so you, well, basically you also just go aren't even really spinning you in your symbol. It's it's not that like spinning inside of symbol of resolution is strong. It's just that symbol of resolution has longer cooldown, so you do it first. Oh, okay. Maybe it's just a dragon hunter thing then. Well, I mean, dragon hunter. Um, dragon hunter is different because the cooldown reduction doesn't exist. Uh, yeah. on, on on Willbender, you're almost always doing four two because the way the cooldown reduction works. But on yeah. dragon hunter, it's like four two five three sword of justice autos, and you just do stuff until you get this back, and then you sword two great or great sword two great sword four, and you alternate back the other way. Oh, interesting. Um, okay. Willbender is almost always going to be doing 4-2. Um, yeah. There are situations where you'd be doing 2-4, but On generally sword, if sword. you're doing 2 into 4, you four. Um, you're committing to the cast time of Greatsword 2, and that yeah. means that that's cast time that's even that's spent where you're not uh, with Symbol of Resolution not on cooldown. Mm -hmm. And if Symbol of Resolution isn't on cooldown, one, that's damage wasted, and two, that's cooldown reductions wasted. So you yeah. really, really want to stay on top of that. Also, a lot of uh, Woolbender openers are structured in a way to preserve um, access to a Woolbender flame because they overwrite each other. So F2, they can coexist, but the second I F3, those disappear in the F3 one it uh, appears. Oh, interesting. The okay. second I F1, it overwrites that and the F1 oh. one appears. Question um, about F2. What's up? Um, so since you give alacrity on your virtues and such. Yes. I've always been kind of worried about F2 because it, it's such a weird directional skill. Um, and worried um, about luckily, like, 
dashing, like, say, you know, you're right. Oh, God. Well, hold on. If I pull up Blish Pad real quick and look at the rotation, every time that it F2s, you're immediately shadow stepping afterwards. So, oh. Sword of Justice into, uh, so you do F2, Repose takes you back to where you cast Flash Combo from. And then if you look at your Sword Bloop, you F2, you immediately Sword 2, which will teleport you back to the boss immediately. Um, the rotation is, isn't only structured in a way to maximize uh, Patha uptime, it's also structured in a way to make sure that you're not inconvenienced by F2. Okay. And it looks um, like the so generally what you're going to do is like radius is like 600. So even if you dash yes, away cuz the, the 600 is, is just for the alacrity and uh region. The might from holy reckoning is a 360 radius. Okay. So might might fall off a, a small bit if you do one and then you do another one that's like you're You have that so much might though. Yeah. Um but like you're in a your DPS that too provides too 20 might. If your quickness DPS can't provide the like 10 might you're not able to provide in that <laughs> yeah. small moment, then you have bigger problems uh, to yeah, worry about. Yeah, that's a bigger concern. Um, but generally, just to sort of illustrate, let's do flash combo, and I'm gonna do a little bit of an auto attack, wait for that to disappear. F1, repose. And now I'm right back, or F2, repose. And now I'm right back to where I was. Okay, so do you only do one cast of F2 at a time? Yeah. Okay. So, or like this, I can do like a uh, sword five, we'll get the uptime. And then when that goes away, I do F2, Sword 2, and then immediately teleports me backwards. Okay, so usually doing like, so F2 and Sword of Justice are always together. So then we're also it, doing Yeah, it's it's always F2, F2 Sword of Justice, then... Shadow Step, always. Whether that Shadow Step is Sword 2 or Repose. But it's gonna depends be one on of the weapon two. you're sword, on. Sword 2 or Repose, okay. Sword yeah. 2 more likely, like if you're on Sword Sword, it's probably gonna be Sword 2. If you're on Sword Sword, you are never cut, touching Repose. Repose's main oh. value is Okay, Repose so is valuable because it's it's a multi-hit for more alacrity, it's two shadow steps for Patha, and it's two shadow steps for Patha while you're on Greatsword, which is your biggest damage source, which does not have shadow steps. Okay, okay. So, yeah, you're always going to be doing, like, this, F2, and then you immediately shadow step back. So that helps really manage. And it also, if you look mm -hmm. really closely, your Wilbur Flame is on top of the boss, which is giving you more multi-hits, which is more might, yeah. more alacrity, whatever. Um... But the rotation is structured so that the uh, concern with flowing resolve is kind of a non-issue. It's weirdly a bigger issue on Wilmender where you don't really have ways to manage it necessarily. Um, let me remove and respawn the golem real quick. Yeah, so you can actually like change your skills and shit. <laughs> yeah. um, let me go to Wilmender. Um, in an emergency, if you do need to reposition really quickly, um, what you can do is you can do banish and then just fuck off. <laughs> uh, was I too far to trigger the shadow step? Oh, cause uh, yeah, it's like you one of the like hammer skills is a shadow step too, right? Yeah. Might makes me right. There we go. Yeah. Um, I don't know what the range on the shadow step is actually. It doesn't. Oh, it's eight hundred. Okay, so it's like decent. That's pretty. Big, um, yeah. so let's do let's do a cooldown reset. Um, I'm gonna hit banish. You can just get back to the boss um, using Vanish and then Hammer 2 in the event that you um, are inconvenienced by Flowing Resolve in some way. You can also Shadow Step back with uh, F3. Oh. Or you can, um, because your boon uptime is generally so like massive, you're applying so many boons. Um, you can actually just F2 tangent to the boss. <laughs> And then just go back to fighting this way. Mm -hmm. Like you don't need to worry about like maximizing your F2 value on Wilmender um, outside of the opener. Cause at that point you're already maintaining all the boons you need to be uh, okay. maintaining. But there are, there are ways for various Wilmender builds to manage F2. And if F2 is a concern on um, power Wilmender or Connie Wilmender, like if, if it would be a liability, you also just don't have to cast it. Um, for the longest time, Wilmender, uh, the your whatever virtue you cast would overwrite not just the Wilbender flames but also the stance effect mm. of previous virtues. Um, so Wilbender got most of its damage uh, from just having F1 active. Um, and the damage difference between having all three versus just one wasn't really that high in the event that you need to, like, you know, make sure you stay alive and F2 would kill you, like you're on a Dina and you don't want to worry about flying over a hole in the ground or something, just don't cast F2. <laughs> 
Because obviously, like, Real. F2 is a, is a DPS gain of probably, like, one or two, like, one to 1.5 thousand DPS if I had to just, like, gut check it. Um, but you're probably losing about that much if you go down and make your squad revive you anyway, so don't even worry about it. I just have to say that I'm disappointed in us for not remembering to use either the Choya or the Long Char Tonic during this entire time. <laughs> <laughs> Those tonics are so wonderful. God, uh, I love. Do I have any? I love the Choya one. Oh, um, I can also illustrate some uh, PVP Wonder stuff if anyone is curious. Um, an important thing to uh, keep in mind for PVE Wonder is uh, let me get a little. There we go. Um, you have one CC. You have Advancing Strike, your uh, Sword Five, which is an Imob. Um, but it's got a pretty big wind up on it. Like there's a big animation at the startup of that. If you want to avoid that, um, you can line of sight your target, like make them. Um, oh, yeah, like the... am I, can I teleport from here? I probably can. Um, you can start casting advancing strike and then um, get close to your target and that'll apply the, uh, hold on, let me, let me remove all of the uh, effects on the golem real quick. There we go. Um, so you see, Oh, it didn't actually respawn him. Uh oh. There's a golem here. No, it didn't respawn without the um, oh. conditions. I don't want the conditions on him. Why does he have conditions still? Uh, bu 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 bu. You have to go to ad additional options. There first. we go. There we go. Oh, okay. Okay. So you see how he has no condies on him? If I go back here, if I've line of sighted the golem, I can hit yeah. advancing strike. Why did they not teleport to him like he did last time? Oh well. I can teleport onto him immediately and get that condition application. Um, you've got to be kind of quick with it. Oh, I need to turn off my boons. That's, it's the quickness that's messing me up. Okay. Um, so you can line of sight your target. I'll do it over here. Pass this into a wall and then immediately teleport to your target and then you get the slow immob immediately. Um, which is very powerful. Um, it's very good for confirming your damage because Wilbur doesn't really have a ton of ways to confirm its damage. Um, another popular option on PvP builds is using Sigil of Stagnation on your Greatsword, um, where you can then teleport and then immediately weapon swap, and that'll cripple your target, which is kind of like, it'll, it'll help you confirm your damage as well. Uh, Woolbender doesn't have a ton of ways to confirm its damage, so the, the few ways that you do have, you need to be very careful about how you're sequencing them. Um, other combos with Judge's Intervention are going to be like, um, if you're bringing Whirling Light, you can use it with Whirling Light. If you're not bringing Whirling Light, you can start precasting this and then teleport in on top of your target to give them a ton of damage. Um, stuff like that is generally pretty powerful. And uh, that's, I think that's it. Unless anyone has any questions or want to, wants to practice anything and get some feedback. Um, I think that's it. Nice. Um... Well, I'll give people a minute to, if they want to type any questions or anything, um, or anyone who's in voices, you can feel free to interject. Um, but otherwise, yeah, uh, that, like, timing-wise, that worked out great. I feel like that was a great amount of time, about an, about an hour or so on the on the presentation, and then getting to spend a chunk of time seeing yeah. you do the skills and demonstrate the rotations and everything, so that was great. Um I feel like I at least know a little bit more about how I'm supposed to be prioritizing my skills when I'm running around with Xena in open world. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's how I learn builds. <laughs> is I just take I, them in open world. I was very uncomfortable in Power Lock Wobender until I was helping Kay do a bunch of dungeon stuff and then getting familiar with it just through doing right? the opener over and over again on trash mobs and dungeons really went a long way in familiarizing the build. Exactly. It really it really helps. Just simply yeah, even getting used to like what each skill does and then you start to get like an instinct for this is when I want to use this one or that one to avoid this or that or you know whatever and then it's a lot easier to uh, digest the rotation concepts because um, then you like have a basis for each yeah. of the skills luckily Wilbender is a lot of like understanding broad concepts of how the spec works and wants to work in an ideal sense and then a lot of like very small micro situation questions asking you like 
um, what do I need to do to maximize this in this situation? Like, um, what does my rotation look like right now? What's the best button for me to push right now? Do I need to delay a symbol because a boss is going to move? Stuff like that. That's where a lot of the skill expression of Willbender comes from. And even though the build has a lot of like similar strengths as Virtuoso, where it's got like relatively free defense access and good ranged and solid line cleave and stuff like that, there's a lot more like moving pieces that need to be sort of put in place on an encounter by encounter basis that really make the build have like a lot of texture, in my opinion. It also is really interesting to me exactly how diet thief it is because like it 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 certainly has its own expression it's it's a very unique thing but it also because of how low the health value is on guardian and how many shadow steps there are particularly on power well then like you were talking about it feels extremely thiefy <laughs> It, it does feel very thiefy. I think in like a macro gameplay sense, uh, Kani Wilbender is very sievert. Um, they both apply mm, okay, conditions okay. by way of, you know, maximizing multi hits. Mm -hmm. They have a specific skill type that they want to maximize in order to generate their primary condition. It's phantasms in the case of Virtuoso and symbols in Wilbender's case. Um, they have a lot of like relatively free defense access, um, good flexible utility. Um, I, I just think that Wilbender is a lot like has more bite to it. Like mm -hmm. Sievert's kind of toothless by comparison. Like you just kind of do the good things and the good things happen. Mm -hmm. Whereas Wilbender has a lot more to like consider in my experience. Plan it a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Um. It it in I think it feels more like a thief in PvP and open world, but I think in in content, uh, yeah. Power Wilbender feels a lot like um, Power Dragon Hunter. Like I think they feel very similar. Um, yeah, Condi Willbender feels a lot like Seaver, and mm -hmm. Power Alack Willbender, I actually think, feels a lot like a Revenant build. The way that you're, like, oh. structuring your rotation and your weapon swaps and stuff to maximize access to, like, you know, pay the ICD, or in Revenant's case, um, your Legend or your Energy, I think yeah. that those kind of map similarly onto one another. Um, which is useful for me. I'm a Revenant player, so thinking about it in that context, like, made a lot of sense for me, but it might not make sense for someone else, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, the forced movement is, or just in general, having a lot of movement skills in your kit is really nice for bosses where there's forced player movement. I'm just commenting I on what uh, Cora said agree. in chat. Because yeah, Untamed, I, uh, granted, does not have quite as much movement as, uh, like, at least from what I've been doing on Power World Bender does. Mm -hmm. But um, it is really fun to be able to just, like, oh, no, the boss moved my deep... Oh, never mind. I'm already at the boss again. <laughs> Wilbender's really fun on Junlai Jade Junkyard because Anka moves around a lot. So, like, planning your symbol casts to make sure you're not placing them as she's moving and using your ability to get back to her and finding ways to na navigate around mechanics and stuff makes the build feel really responsive on a fight like that. Yeah, but as usual, um, on any build where there's, uh, m like, lots of movement or mobility in it, you have to be really careful for like you don't like teleport yourself into like the death field on Anka or something yeah, like that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. It's it's dangerous. Um like I I, I made the joke at the start of the presentation where it was like you know, injured a little bit or how I learned to you know stop worrying and love dying to force movement. Haha, <laughs> funny. But like yeah genuinely a lot of the fun of Wilbender is being able to laugh at yourself in the funny situations that are just gonna fucking kill you sometimes like it, it's oh. it's just the way it is did I take a clip of maybe it was a... yeah it was a twitch clip hold on <laughs> um I'm I'm the still first time I brought it into raids <laughs> <laughs> I remember you sharing that yeah. here I have my uh metal real, real quick that I can share a couple of like really funny Wilbender clips with because th the spec is fun the spec is funny it like it feels funny to play people can laugh at you um, and you can laugh at yourself on all these like really like interesting and stupid situations that the spec puts you in that are you know hilarious. But like this is me playing on. Um, oh wait, hold on. Let me make. John sure. Lloyd, J D Junkyard, C M. Let me know you the stream. Okay, now I'm sharing. Up. Go ahead. Um, I'm moving around to try to get around these mechanics. I get back to Anka. I get back. I, I'm in this AOE field by this Zaitan head. Someone it's dropped barely. this pool a little too oh, close. No. It knocks me down, sucks me oh, in into no. the death field, and I'm dead. <laughs> it's just immediate. <laughs> I, uh, this is why hey, I, I whenever we play that. with, yeah, whenever I, we play with Strikes for Currency, I always flame people that drop those too close, because that shit happens all the time. I felt really bad. I think it was one of the recent times we were doing that, and I just, like, I, like, 
have not never gotten so many mechanics for that fight before as I did that one time. Yeah, and I was here's I me feeling by the way for a um, Harvest Temple group. Um, by the way, quick note for Harvest Temple: um, I often or usually swap sword for scepter on that fight. Scepter's better for farming stacking sigils, and it has a faster multi-hit. So your opener ends up your fight, burst scepter. ends up being a little bit stronger at the expense of some of your sustained damage. Um, but on phases of Shortest Harvest Temple, it generally doesn't matter. So Scepter is often better, even on Power Worldbender in this context. Um, however, this is me getting fucked by the most Worldbender thing imaginable. I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm doing my rotation. I hit F1. Or no, I don't hit F1 quite yet. Move back. Move back into the stack. Wait for my stuff to come off cooldown. Cool. I cast F1. What the fuck? I had no say in that. <laughs> I had no say in what just happened to me. Um, it's just, Willbender's funny sometimes. The, the game is fickle, uh, and being able to laugh at how you die is a lot of the fun of the spec, in my opinion. Oh, there's clips. I was trying to find, yeah, here we go. Average Willbender experience. Um, I remember when you posted that clip yeah, and I was like, ah. I'm actually this is... going to just send you the link for it again because otherwise, uh, I don't know if I have my desktop scaled for um, stream, so you can, it seems like you're able to more easily show it. Yeah, I, I'd be happy to. Okay, let me send this message. There we go. Yeah, we spoke like, we spoke like semi recently. Let me bring the window capture back up. It wants to load, which is being a little temperamental. Thinking about it, it's bonking. There we go. Yeah, this is a uh, people bending. <laughs> what? Woolbender on structure bosses in particular is a nightmare. Um, I don't enjoy it on uh, on um, Conjured Amalgamate. I generally just play Vindicator there, to be honest. Um, yeah, that was. <laughs> I just was like so surprised i wasn't expecting that to happen i was like oh okay it's it's funny the build is very fickle mm -hmm. uh but it's fickle in, in a funny way it's not like yeah. um mirage where like sometimes shit will just happen and your build stops working it's like well Bender, it's like oh I, I i guess i just died to uh, the gods deeming that i'm not fit for this encounter right now yeah right <sighs> okay um well yeah thank you again yeah, of course. And um, as far as... Oh, well, just so everyone knows, you can find Pixel on the Snowcrows help desk, particularly in the Guardian channel. Uh, I also run the channel. official Snowcrows Twitter account. Um, nice, if you nice. followed that account, um, you might see posts from me from time to time. Um, so if you have additional questions that you want to ask P Pixel about, or I'm, I mean, I'm kind of volunteering you here, but I know that you're generally open I, to it. Yeah, if absolutely, yes. If you want help with your Willbender rotation... Pixel is more than happy to help out with that. Um, I will say, um, if you want to learn Woolbender and you want to learn a Woolbender rotation, if you bring that to me, a log is always appreciated. But more so than most specs, Woolbender, I would appreciate you record a POV and send that to me. Um, Elite Insights doesn't uh, track cooldown states, which is very important for like making correct decisions on Woolbender. So I can't see what buttons are and are not off cooldown. I can just see what order you push the buttons in. So being able to see why you're making the decisions you're making with active cooldowns and stuff is really useful. So if you want Woolbender feedback, please record a POV and send that to me, but I would be happy to help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, and then our next one that we're gonna have, um, so I all- Untamed class with you! Yes, Untamed class with me, I'm excited! <laughs> because I love Untamed, so that's gonna be on May, I'm looking for So it. I have an Untamed question, how do I use Fervent Force? You don't anymore. <laughs> it's so sad. <laughs> if you want your Fervent Force cooldown reduction, just come to Woolbender. Yeah, right? Um... Hopefully, hopefully Restorative Virtues doesn't get deleted from the fucking game. I would quit Guild Wars if they did that. This is a threat, Anet. If you delete R Restorative Virtues from Guild Wars, I will quit Guild Wars. Like, Fervent Force, like, broke too many things. I, okay, it was if you will, so if you will permit me, the issue with Fervent Force isn't that it was too strong or not fun or whatever. It's that Fervent Force is either broken, it's either the best thing for Untamed to do, or it's useless, 
and it's the worst thing for Untamed to do. Yeah, it's it is not like now. a granular balance option. It's like either the spec is fervent force or you nerf the, the like the interesting trait. So I think that they just needed to rip the bandaid off. Yeah, it's like because what even is it now? Oh, well, they got rid of it. It's ferocious symbiosis now. Yeah. So, um, or no, maybe they replaced it with let loose because they I added think it was quick. Let loose. Yeah, because they added quick. So I think they just totally replaced it with let loose. But yeah, it was very sad because Fervent Force Untamed was just like, it was a lot of fun. The only thing is that it didn't just reduce your ranger cooldowns. It also it reduced all the skills. cooldowns of like special action keys that you get. And so it was like out of control on some bosses. Yeah, um, unfortunately, um, Wheelbender cooldown reduction stuff uh, doesn't apply to special action keys. It doesn't apply to your utility skills. That one it correctly. doesn't apply to bundles. Yeah, they were responsible. Actually, yeah. they weren't responsible. You want to see something actually kind of messed up? Yes. Check this out. Um, I'm going to F2, F2, F3, F1. Might makes me right. Hold on. If you if you look very carefully, Pistol 4 doesn't get affected by restorative virtues. That's nice. <laughs> look, I'm doing all of my multi hits and it's just a normal cooldown. That's so sad. Yeah, Anet, uh, please fix. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> it's it's fine I, yeah. I mean it would buff a build that doesn't need to be buffed i want i, yeah, I would fair. obviously love for it to be fixed but you know yeah. they're nerf the build first it's yeah. a little bit too strong yeah so uh may 18th about a month from now what what the fuck's today today is april 5th so a little over a month from now um, yeah. i did have my ng class and will blender class kind of back to back and that's just the way scheduling worked yeah. out but um as people have maybe heard me say before on the uh, channel. I can't believe that you got an actually talented player in Sin to teach the engineer class and you had to settle for me for Wellbender class. Talk about a downgrade. <laughs> well, you are the Wellbender, aren't you? Unfortunately, uh, yeah. Wellbender was so unpopular for so long that they had to settle for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I get Untamed too. And I'm not, I am definitely not the best Untamed. All the time I'm fighting, not fighting, racing Jekyll in Strikes for Currency. Jekyll is such a good player. For those of you who don't know, Jekyll is the number one strike untamed on Wingman and is a sweetheart as well. Um, whenever I'm like, yeah, I beat Jekyll, he just like puts a little cutesy smiley face in chat. He's like, yeah, good job. I love that me and Nier are always gassing each other up about like saying like too. the other one is the better Wolvender player. It's, I think it's a very fun, good bit. It's so wholesome. I love Nier. <laughs> Nier Nier's good people. He is. He's great. I, I miss Kronk. I wish he would come back. <laughs> He was Kronk and I was Isma. Um oh, the leather in here. <laughs> the wrong, wrong leather. <laughs> um, yeah, so anyways, I'll be doing Untamed class on May 17th. And then um I'm not sure what the one after that's gonna be yet. We will see. Um and on Sunday I'll be streaming raids. Um Otherwise, yeah, that's it for now. Thank you, everyone, for coming and hanging out. If you have requests on classes for me to hold, you are welcome to um, DM me or say so in Twitch chat. Um, my Discord is the same as my tag is here on Twitch. It's just Zoalera. Um, yeah. So thanks, everybody. Thank you all for uh for coming i had a lot of fun and i really hope that at least one person checks out woodbender after uh after today yeah bye everyone bye